Hey all, welcome to Share Trek. This is Raj here. Friends, I'm so, so sorry for the delay in bringing out this HIV video. I always try to uh, launch the HIV video on Fridays at 5 o'clock in the morning, Toronto time. But this time, I'm talking about an existing therapy that's been approved by FDA for other indication, not for HIV. But it works in a different manner. Uh, so I had a lot of reading up to do because our focus has been on AGT-103 and EBT-101, all of which are genomic uh, medicines in a way. So we have been talking about DNA, we have been talking about CD4 T cells, antibodies and so on. But what I'm going to talk about today is different. I have been also working on uh, improving the channel contents. I want to create a new watch list of companies over and above the one watch list we already have for genomic companies so that we can have better variety of programming for our invest investment viewers. And also for HIV, I'm planning to bring two videos per week. So I have been really, really busy trying to put all these together. And I'm also trying to add new articles into the uh, sharetrek.com website. So guys, you can imagine how busy I have been. So I think it will take a little while for me to stabilize into the routine and uh, get into uh, publishing two HIV videos every week and also two videos every, every day on uh, genomic investment as well as uh, uh, investment in typical blue chips. That said, today I want to talk about a promising development within, within an existing class of medicine to decimate the dormant HIV pools. Let's talk about that. Let's get started. Welcome back friends. Today I want to talk about JAK inhibitors, J-A-K. Uh, they belong to a category of drugs known as targeted therapies or biological therapies. These medications are specifically designed to interact with certain molecules or proteins in the body that are involved in causing or worsening particular diseases. JAK inhibitors stand out as a special class because they specifically target the Janus kinase proteins. That's where the name JAK inhibitors comes from. The Janus kinase proteins play a critical role in regulating immune responses and inflammation. And by focusing on these proteins, JAK inhibitors have a unique mechanism of action uh, compared to other types of drugs. In the medical field, different classes of medicines are often grouped together based on how they work and what they target. JAK inhibitors have their own uh, distinct characteristics that set them apart from other medications, making them a special class within the realm of uh, therapeutic options and uh, for conditions involving immune dysfunctions and inflammation. Let me explain JAK inhibitors in a little more detail so that you can understand the significance of this discovery and also uh, visualize all the things that need to happen before it can become part of a HIV treatment regime. Imagine your body as a complex system with various parts working together to keep you healthy. Sometimes this system can go a bit haywire, causing problems like inflammation and immune responses that are way too strong. This can lead to conditions like uh, autoimmune diseases where the immune system attacks healthy cells uh, or uh, certain uh, skin conditions. This is where JAK inhibitors come into play. JAK stands for Janus kinase, as I mentioned before, which is a type of protein uh, that plays a key role in uh, transmitting signals within your body. These signals are important for various um, uh, processes, including immune response and inflammation. JAK inhibitors are medications that target the Janus kinase proteins. By inhibiting or blocking their activity, these medications can help regulate your body's immune responses and inflammation. Essentially, JAK inhibitors work like a control switch turning down the overly strong uh, signals that lead to problems like inflammation in certain diseases. And doctors may prescribe uh, JAK inhibitors to treat conditions like rheumatoid arthritis, psoriasis and certain types of inflammatory bowel diseases. Uh, by using these inhibitors, the goal is to bring your body back into balance and reduce the symptoms caused by the overactive uh, immune response. It's important to note that while JAK inhibitors can be very effective in managing these conditions, they also come with potential side effects. Since they affect the immune system, they might increase the risk of infections and uh, there could be other side effects as well. So if a doctor decides to suggest using JAK inhibitors, they will carefully have weighed the benefits and risks to ensure that it's the right choice for the specific situation and the specific patient. 
In summary, JAK inhibitors are medications that help control your body's immune response and inflammation by targeting specific proteins. They can be valuable tools in, manu- uh, in managing certain conditions, but uh, their use requires close medical supervision uh, due to potential side effects and uh, the results of a recent novel study presented by Emory researchers during the International AIDS Society conference that was held very recently in uh, Brisbane, Australia, have revealed the potential of JAK inhibitors, specifically ruxolitinib, uh, which is um, uh, which has been shown to significantly uh, decay uh, the viral reservoir in people with HIV, offering a novel uh, pathway towards long-term remission from HIV and also a potential cure. Let me explain this further. The study was uh, led by Monica Rees, who is a PhD candidate in Emory's Microbiology and Genetics program. And the study was directed by Christina Gavignano, who is a PhD I- in Emory University. The viral uh, HIV reservoir essentially is a small number of immune cells containing dormant virus integrated into the genomes of the individual who have uh, suppressed viral replication with uh, HIV treatment and has posed a major impediment in achieving an HIV cure because these cells are completely undetectable by the immune system because the virus is dormant. But as soon as treatment stops, the virus uh, reactivates itself and starts making copies and throwing out uh, viral uh, RNA uh, to infect other cells. The research uh, by the Emory scientists focused on assessing integrated uh, proviral DNA, which is the virus's genetic material that has become part of host cell uh, genome and is capable of reproducing along with it. And uh, the study investigated alteration to the total number of proviral DNA copies considering those that were fully functional as well as those that were defective. Uh, that This uh, was done throughout the study period. And applying a linear uh, decay model, the scientists calculated remarkably high 99.99% reduction in the peripheral HIV-1 reservoir in under three years. These findings offer hope that the potential of JAK inhibitors uh, is uh, to form a foundational approach uh, in uh, strategies aimed at curing and potentially eradicating HIV. The profound impact of uh, rexolitinib uh, treatment was not limited to reservoir reduction. The study also shed light on several significant biomarkers that were altered by the drug, primarily uh, these related to immune activation, where rexolitinib exhibited the potential to modulate immune activation which is crucial in controlling viral replication and maintaining immune health in individuals with HIV. It also showed its uh, impact on cell survival, where it demonstrated the ability to impact cell survival, influencing the lifespan of reservoir cells and potentially limiting the reservoir longevity. It also showed its impact on immune uh, dysregulation, where the study identified uh, rexolitinib's uh, impact on uh, immune dysregulation, offering hope for mitigating the chronic inflammation and uh, immune dysfunction often observed in individuals with uh, HIV. It's important to note that the study uh, focused on the uh, peripheral uh, viral reservoir and may not uh, fully represent the entire viral reservoir within the body, uh, including sanctuary uh, sites where HIV can persist despite treatment. Uh, It is to be noted that uh, rexolitinib is already used to treat other serious condition Uh, such as uh, myelofibrosis, uh, and it's also used to treat uh, polycythemia vera in people who were not able to be treated successfully with hydroxyurea. Rexolitinib is also used to treat uh, acute uh, graft-versus-host disease, a complication uh, of hematopoietic stem cell transplants, and uh, we have seen this uh, GVHD concern uh, also with our uh, genomic uh, therapies for various uh, therapies that are on clinical trials. And uh, that's the reason why they use conditioners. Uh, meanwhile, uh, it's uh, important to note that Novart is already manufactures it in tablet form. Uh, and uh, there's also a screen, a skin cream formulation that is manufactured by Insight uh, for the short-term and non-continuous uh, treatment of mild to moderate atopic dermatitis in uh, non-immunocompromised uh, uh, patients. Uh, however, clinical trials um, uh, need to be uh, done. Uh, for it uh, to be used in HIV to make sure that it does not cause other uh, side effects and that it's uh, in otherwise normal uh, individuals who just happen to have HIV. And that's the reason why I think uh, it can't be prescribed immediately for HIV. Uh, It has to go through some kind of uh, regulatory process to make sure 
that uh, the dosage is calibrated and um, uh, all known side effects are identified so that a physician can look at the cost benefit uh, risk and benefit of uh, the therapy and uh, make the prescription. I'm going to keep track of this um, uh, research as it goes ahead. And if there's any new information, I'll get back to you uh, with any new development that is there. And now, friends, uh, I have a special request to make. We are coming to the end of the month, uh, and uh, it's a good time to consider uh, becoming a member of the channel by pressing the join button. You are becoming a member will uh, help us uh, keep the HIV program going and also step it up to more than once a week. There are already uh, a few members who have joined for HIV and there is a couple of Patreons also. So you have the choice of either becoming a Patreon member uh, or becoming a, a member of the YouTube channel. Both of the links are in the description below. Uh, and uh, once you join, it will uh, help uh, this uh, channel continue doing HIV program uh, programming and uh, uh, increase the frequency of the programs. And also, uh, it will be your way of appreciating the channel. There is also a membership available for regular uh, just to support the channel. Uh, so that membership is also available for most people. So with that request, uh, I'd like to end this video. That's all for now from me. And I'll be back with a new video very soon. Bye for now.